the difference between men and women for their responses to cardiorespiratory training, so we're talking about aerobic exercise, is essentially zero. There is no difference between the training adaptations. However, there is a difference in their baselines, and so that does continue through training. So discussing respiratory function, larger lungs in men, this is driven by larger body. So in general, the larger the person, specifically the taller the person, the larger the lungs are going to be. It just makes the thoracic cavity where the lungs sit bigger and that allows for larger lung development. Talking about cardiac function, uh, similar, we end up with heart, larger hearts in men than women because they have larger bodies. But how does that affect cardiorespiratory fitness and cardiorespiratory function. If you were to take a man and a woman with same the same age, the same training status, uh, and you had them do the same submaximal aerobic workload, so both on a treadmill, maybe five miles per hour, 2% grade, uh, you would find that the cardiac output between men and women was approximately the same. All right, so if we look at this figure over here, we're seeing uh, cardiac output being approximately the same between the women and the men, so the men being the blue bars, the women being the red bars. However, how they get this cardiac output is different. Stroke volume tends to be higher in men than women, so men are going to have a higher stroke volume uh, than, than what women do. However, women are going to compensate with higher heart rates than men. So women have higher heart rates, men have higher stroke volumes. Stroke volume times heart rate gives you cardiac output, though. So at sub-maximal exercise intensities, this level of compensation is possible, and you end up with the same cardiac output. These differences are driven by the larger hearts of men because men tend to have larger bodies. Larger hearts, larger stroke volumes, less heart rate necessary to reach the same cardiac output. There are also some subtle differences between men and women for aerobic metabolism, so VO2 or oxygen consumption. Um, so if we're looking at the same sub-maximal workload, Again, five miles per hour, 2% grade on a treadmill, both a man and a woman doing that. The relative VO2 would be about the same between men and women, just like the cardiac output was about the same between men and women. Um, but also like cardiac output, we're going to get to that differently between men and women. Men have a higher oxygen carrying capacity of their blood because they have higher hemoglobin, and women are going to rely more heavily on AVO2 difference, so arterial venous oxygen difference, um, that, which basically means they're going to extract more of the oxygen that comes to their muscle than what men do. This is compensatory mechanism for the lower hemoglobin levels. All right, so both are able to do the same exercise intensity at a submaximal level. They get about the same relative VO2, that is in milliliters of oxygen per kilogram body mass per minute, but they do so slightly differently. There is a difference between men and women for maximum oxygen consumption. Again, this is in milliliters of oxygen per kilogram of body mass per minute, so this is relative VO2 max that we're talking about. Men tend to have higher VO2 maxes than women do. There are a few reasons for this. We're gonna start with the reasons with the lowest impact on VO2 max and work our way up to the highest impact on VO2 max. So the lowest of the three reasons, women have lower hemoglobins than men, hemoglobin concentrations than men, which means per unit of blood, they have less oxygen. A more moderate impact is women have lower cardiac output max, so cardiac output at maximal exercise than what men do. This is driven by lower stroke volume at max because they have smaller hearts. They have equal abilities to increase their heart rate during maximal exercise, so it's really the stroke volume that is the difference here. The factor with the highest impact on, on VO2 max between men and women has less to do with physiology, more to do with how we calculate relative VO2. So we do milliliters of oxygen per kilogram of total body mass per minute. Because women have a higher body fat percentage, that means a higher percentage of the weight that they are carrying is fat than men, and that fat is less metabolically active, so it's often called metabolically dead, and it is less functional, so it is not uh, muscle weight that can produce force and consume oxygen at high levels. So when we're making relative VO2 relative to total body mass, there's a giant difference between men and women. When discussing women and their participation in exercise and sport, there are some special considerations like menstrual dysfunction and pregnancy that we need to also discuss. I'm going to be putting those into additional videos, so please make sure you watch those as well.